Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. It's a nice drive to the station. I'm glad it's a sunny day. Why particularly, Mama? It's pleasant to leave a place when the sun's shining. It's pleasanter not to leave a place when the sun's shining. That's true. Hmm, everything's quite green now, isn't it? Trees and grass. Yeah, it's almost summer. Winter's gone fast. Now that it is gone... That's the way it always is, isn't it? What is? While you were visiting with us, it seemed as if it would always last like that. Now that you're leaving, it seems like you were hardly with us at all. That's the right time to leave. Mama, do you think Aunt Louise is going to be sick very long? I don't know. She's not a young woman. She's our only real relative. I hope she'll be all right. I'll stay with her until she is. We decided over the weekend I can't keep going back and forth between New York and Eastbrook, and that's the least I can do for my sister-in-law. Funny, thinking of Aunt Louisa as my father's sister. I know. Mama, you are going to come back up here afterwards, aren't you? Claudia, is that my train? Why, I, I, I don't know. It's five to five. Your train's not due till five after, Mama. It could be early. Oh, I doubt it. Trains are usually late. Maybe you better drive a little faster. What did you say, Mama? I said maybe you better drive a little faster. That's what I thought you said. I'm driving 40, Mama. Then drive 45. And break the law? Nobody will see you. There's nobody around. Really, Mama, you're talking like a hardened old criminal. I'd rather you miss that silly old train break the law. Since when have you gotten so virtuous? David likes me to be virtuous. You can't fool me. You're just contrary. Claudia, Claudia, quite contrary. How does your garden grow? we will miss my train if you keep poking along like this. Good, I hope so. Hey, I'm on the right side. Besides, I'm not poking along. Mama, do you realize what you're doing? What? All my life you've been telling me to drive slower. All your life. All you've only life. had a license six months. And now, when I'm on the verge of having a baby... It's going to be you... a pretty long verge. You want me to drive faster. You have no feeling for your grandson. I'll remind you of this conversation sometime when you insist on driving 60 miles an hour to no place. I still don't know why you want to make that train so badly. Anything to get away from here? Then you'll be happy to know. We're almost at the station. Good. Mama. What? Oh, nothing. I guess the first thing I'll have to do is put my drape covers on. I haven't been home in such a while. The apartment will be a mess. Let me see. Slip covers. Send the bedspread to the cleaners. Any shopping you want me to do? Mm, no. I'm going into town next week. I have to see Dr. Rowland. Let me know which day you're planning on. Mm, I'll think about it. Oh, Claudia. Well, here we are. But only just. <sighs> now may, maybe my pulse will go back to normal. Say, I don't see any other cars around. Not a soul on the station platform. Hey, maybe that was your train, Mama. Oh, it couldn't have been. Why not? When's the next one? Not for hours. You'll have to come back home with me, Mama, that's not all. Not on your life. Mm -hmm. She's independent, too. Claudia, if you've made me miss my train on purpose, I'll... What will you do? Catch the next one. <laughs> I'll take your bag, Mom. You will not. I am younger than you are. Who says? And I'm not having the baby. I wish somebody told me that having a baby would give everybody else the privilege of bossing me around. Do you good. Is it heavy, Mama? This little bag? Besides which, you hardly let me pack anything. I'm holding your clothes for ransom, so you'll have to come back sooner. So I'll be ashamed to walk around in New York, you mean. <laughs> I don't know how you ever, I ever let you talk me into it. Oh, there's one. Maybe that's my, one's mine. I thought yours was halfway to New York by now. Probably is. It's just five o'clock, Mama. Stand back when the train comes or you'll get a cinder in your eye. What time does David get here? On his usual train, I guess, about 6.30. What'll you do between now and then? Oh, I don't know. Drive around? Maybe mark it a little. Maybe just stay here. It's only a little over an hour. That's all. 
are even going to stop? Well, it's a freight train to boot. I hope it's a short one. They never are. Strange. The time up here has gone surprisingly fast. I know. I didn't even mind your cooking. Oh, a person can get used to anything, they say. I suppose so. Say, hey, Mama, now it only costs 45 cents to call Eastbrook from New York after 7 o'clock, so I'll please. get reckless once in a while. I'll call you. Oh, you'd better. It was a short train. Oh, it's so quiet all of a sudden. Mm, now you can hear yourself think. I don't hear a thing. I'm not surprised. Even though I'm thinking? What about? That you're crazy to be going back to New York like this. Oh, that again. Mama, listen, you, you still have time to change your mind. Claudia, don't try flattery. Don't you like our house? It's not bad. Don't you like the country? Pretty well. Don't you like your room and bath? Oh, very much. Then it's all very clear you just don't like me. How do you guess? I mean it, Mama. So do I. Now, seriously, Mama, listen. Seriously? Oh, you. You are impossible, Mrs. Brown. Do you know a person can't even have an intelligent conversation with you anymore? All right, I'll show you. I won't even ask you to change your mind. Good. Hmm. My train's late. First it was early, then it was late. Oh, have you got something to read on your late train? You can't read on a train. It gives me a headache. Besides, the scenery is pretty. I bet it'll be raining in New York. Why? And it's dirty and terribly noisy. And... And what? And, uh... Well, that's all. I'll send you a postcard. From Times Square, a picture of Broadway at night. Or maybe the East River. You'll get so that you like living in the country even better than in New York, Claudia. Who said I didn't already? Not I. Honestly, David adores it here. I do, too. I do, honestly. Oh, I wish that train would come. I hate stations. What time is it now? Mm, let's see. It's uh, just five after five. Mama, listen to me now. You listening? Sure. You never do. You always say you are, and you never do. Well, listen this time. If by any chance you should get lonesome, will you please... Yes, and please. I promise to eat three regular meals a I day. I don't even care how regular they are, just so long as you eat three of them. Yes, ma'am. Anything else? Mm, no, ma'am. Nothing else. Well, at last. That's it, I guess. Claudia, don't go so near the edge of the platform. I, I, I don't see a thing, Mama. Then come back here. Oh, for heaven's sake, it's coming from the opposite direction. Must be a train from New York, not to New York. It looks like every train is arriving into this station except today, except mine. Nothing personal, Mama. Oh, yeah. Why don't you run along home? I, I can manage from here by myself. Go home? I will not. Well, what's the matter? Do you think I'll get on the wrong train? Worse yet, you might not leave at all. Oh, don't worry, terrible. I will. Maybe your train got lost. Or maybe it hits down to the wrong engine. <laughs> Look here, if you're in such a hurry to get rid of me... How'd you know? Oh. Somebody ought to invent something better than stations. Why? They're a horrible place to say goodbye. And don't say it. Why'd we get here so early anyway? Gloria! Hey, Gloria! David! Mama, it's David. Tell him not to shout like that. Hello, Mother! David! Mama says not to shout like that. Mama's right, as usual. Well, stop I shouting then. Your side of the platform. Good, come on over. What are you waiting for? Hey, David! What are you doing home so early today? Claudia, I'm embarrassed to be seen with you. Nobody's seeing us, Mama. Everybody's Don't hearing you for miles around. There's nobody here, even for miles around. <laughs> I'm on my way over. Stay where you are. Hear Stay that, right Mama? There. Even David doesn't want you to go away. David's very broad-minded. He has to be. Look at the mother-in-law he got. What about her? Southern, independent. Just oh. like her daughter. So different. Not so different. You'll see. Mama. Mama, your... Your collar's crooked. It is? Oh, thanks for telling me. No extra charge. Mama, you're sure you don't want anything to read or Positive. eat or... 
think you'd rather just look over somebody else's shoulder now. That's it, of course. The trains certainly let you know they're coming, don't they? And this one is mine. Well, it's about time. Well, I guess. Where's my valise? Oh, it's right here. Where is it? Now I can't... Oh, here What's it is. What's the matter? Well, wait a minute. David will take it for you, Mom. Ouch! What's the matter? I've caught a cinder in my eye. I told you. I'd better hurry. Feels as big as a house, Mama. Claudia, be sure you drive carefully and listen to what David says. Mama, wait. Mama, please promise me that. Oh, this I... Say goodbye to your cap and don't for me and hello to David. Oh, where's my handkerchief? I know I took it. I remember putting it in my pocket. There it is. No idea. Mama, lend me your handkerchief, would you? Mama! Mama! He's gone. Goodbye, Mama. Hello, darling. Oh, David. Mama's gone. She left me with a cinder in my eye. Well, that was a terrible thing for her to do. Wasn't it? She didn't even lend me her handkerchief. Then here's mine. Now, go on. Blow. Blowing never helps take a cinder out of a person's eye. Mm, that's a matter of opinion. David, you don't think I'm crying, do you? Well, of course not, darling. I never even got a chance to say goodbye, so how could I be crying? Oh, it's an elephant in my eye. Right here. Open it up. Why? You're very talented at this, you know it. Uh, roll your eye around to the left. It's on the right. Do as I say. You were sweet to come up early, just so I wouldn't feel an empty house. <laughs> Sweet nothing. I just didn't want you driving back and forth on these roads more than necessary. Honestly, you and Mama. Even when I drive slowly. Don't you like the way I drive? I don't like. There. How's your eye feel? It feels much better. Cinder must be gone. Oh, David, Mama's gone, too. But even so, everything feels all right. Good. I knew it would. Well, now that the going's over... Wasn't so bad, David. It's like a cinder. Come on, darling. Let's go home. If you're like most women who are at home during the day, your lunch is rather sketchy, consisting of whatever you find in the refrigerator. But I can assure you of this. If you add an ice-cold bottle of Coca-Cola to your noontime meal, you'll make lunchtime refreshment time, and whatever you eat will taste that much better. For the pause that refreshes is particularly welcome in the midst of a busy day. Say, Joe, if you happen to be in New York tonight, would you do us a favor? Certainly, David. What's on your mind? Call up Mama, would you? See how she is. Of course I will. Tell me, David, how's the house coming? Are you going to do much more work on it? Well, I'll be able to answer that tomorrow night. Claudia's going to balance the budget, and I think it's going to be a very enlightening evening. I know what you mean. Mind if I eavesdrop? Not at all. See you tomorrow night. So long, Joe. Goodbye, David. As I was about to say... Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you, transcribed, with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. These broadcasts are adapted for radio by Manya and Roger Starr. And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.